This is the destroy Tesla plan. I would take Farley over Musk in 2026. Ah. In this video, Tesla gets screwed over by corruption within the US political system again. Jim Cramer proves all the partying he did in the past has caused permanent brain damage and goes on the record saying that he prefers Ford over Tesla and Elon Musk defiantly swings around his gigantic clackers in the face of an angry Russian politician. This one's gonna be good. So let's get into the video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. First things first, Tesla stock up 25.5% in the last five trading days. Year to date, Tesla stock down about as much as it's up in the past five days. In other words, a bumpy ride as always. And yes, I still think this is the bargain of the century. Now, let's watch Jim Cramer make a fool of himself for the very first time ever on CNBS. Ford's up in the pre-market. Company announces it will run its EV and internal combustion units as separate entities within the automaker. There's Ford Model E will develop the EVs, while the traditional business will be called Ford Blue. At a news conference in the last hour, CEO Jim Farley said that both units will, quote, drive the success of each other, although clearly the ICE business, Jim, is going to be the cash yes. engine. Which And he'll run EVs. And nice little bump in the EBIT uh, margin target. Yes. Now, now uh, one of the things that Jim was saying to me yesterday was, look, uh, I the industrial... The combustion people are industrialists, right? But they're they're willing to be whatever's necessary. But in the end, they're internal combustion people, and they're not really buying into EV. The EV people, here's something really exciting. It's going to be run by a Doug Field, who used, who was late of the Apple car that wasn't developed, but then helped to, uh, at Tesla to launch the Model 3. What is he banking on, Farley? The Model E, which, by the way, did you know that Musk tried to get that name? Model E? Yeah, Model E. So oh, it's going to be the Model E, like Model T, like right. Model A, Model E. Okay. okay. And he does one, you know, this is the destroy Tesla plan. I remember Tesla produced 330,000 cars in America. He wants to do 2 million. Uh, I think Farley's ambitions are remarkable. I think that this was good that he didn't do the financial engineering that the hedge funds wanted him to do, which would be amazing because, like, all the cash is generated by ICE and the EV needed money. Now, don't forget, he's got that stake in Rivian, which is really awful because they just raised the price of something you ordered. They did. We'll talk about that but again But I later really also. think that when I listen to Farley, yeah. I would take Farley over Musk in 2026. Ah. Jim Cramer actually just said that. You heard the co-host there just burst out laughing, couldn't even hold it in. I mean, what planet is this guy on? I think the mountains of cocaine this guy snorted in the 90s, 2000s, allegedly, in my opinion, do your own research, may have caused some permanent brain damage. Or it's possible that Jim Cramer's charitable trust, the largest position, of course, being Ford's stock, may have distorted Jim's perspective on reality and or created an incentive for Jim Cramer to talk up Ford because it might help his charitable trust's largest position. Of course, Jim Cramer wouldn't do that because that might be stock market manipulation and nobody would ever do that, the least of which being Jim Cramer. I don't know why, but today seems like it's gonna be a great day. A lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would, uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. Uh, similarly, if uh, or if I were long and I would want to make things a little bit rosy, I would go in and take a bunch of stocks and make sure that they are, they're higher. And maybe commit $5 million in capital to do it and I could affect it. Uh, what you're seeing now is maybe, it probably is bigger market now, maybe you need $10 million in capital to knock this stuff down. But it's a fun game and it's a <laughs> lucrative game. There's a skip in my step, a pep in my pep. <sighs> Don't know why. You can move it up and then fade it. That's all often creates a very negative feel. So let's say you take a longer term view intraday and you say, listen, I'm going to boost the futures. And then when the real sellers come in, real market comes in, they're going to knock it down. That's going to create a negative, uh, negative view. That's a strategy very worth doing. 
when you're va when you're valued on a day-to-day -day basis and I would encourage anyone who's in the hedge fund game to do it because it's legal right and it um, it is a very quick way to make money and very satisfying okay um, well Oh, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I can care. That's right, and you can say that here. I can't. I'm not going to say it on TV. <laughs> uh, a hedge fund that's not up a lot really has to do a lot now to save itself. So um, this is different from what I was talking about at the beginning, where I would be buying the cues and stuff. Right. This is actually just a blatantly illegal. But when you have six days and your company may be in doubt because you're down, I think it's really important to foment. Well, that's obviously deep fake. It's not real footage. Jim Cramer would never talk about intentionally manipulating stock prices up or down and explain how to do it. He did run a hedge fund, literally explaining how a hedge fund would manipulate stock prices. So Jim Cramer would never even consider doing such a thing. I don't even know why that strange video played. Please, let's move on. Let's hear Jim Cramer delivery is completely unbiased, absolutely not at all intended to manipulate any stock prices. Comments about Ford and his preference of Ford over Tesla. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I would take Farley over Musk in 2026. Ah. In 2026. 2026. When they're going to make two million cars. Two million, two million EVs. Well, I, I, that, All right, so that's I liked your, it. I like loved a, Farley. It's like a the two million, I, wish, I want him to pull back from the two mil. I wouldn't have called him at the two mil. Um, this does Should make call it, him from, an, from an investor perspective, it obviously will give a lot more transparency in terms of the progress of both and their yes. pro potential profitability. And you're going to see one going like this, I would assume, and one going like this. Well, actually, I don't know because the internal combustion the F-350, the F-250, my, Ma still <laughs> my Maverick, which gets 40 miles to the gallon. This poor guy has absolutely no idea. He still thinks people are going to be buying EVs in the later half of this decade, probably beyond that as well. Doesn't even understand that the ICE business is going to be collapsing while the EV business is growing rapidly. In short, what Kramer just said there is Ford, slow down. Don't move to EVs so fast. Two million by 26, nah, nah, nah. We don't need that many. I don't know what's going on up here, but I think Kramer needs an intervention. Mustang, mach -E. So the there isn't necessarily who, by the way, Decline in one at the expense of the other. Right. And, now, don't right. forget, uh, Benioff claimed he only had two Mach-E's last night on the Salesforce call. I think that's an underestimation how many Mach-E's he has. Okay. But I do believe that, remember, he's making money on everything. Farley will not make something he doesn't make money on, which I think is incredible. Because people, it, believe, and Jim, by the way, the, 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 the elect, you remember the electric one, the, uh, the F-150 is coming out in the fall. You does can't it get make it, it easier yet. for them one day down the road to split the company the way there had been some rumors? He doesn't, doesn't want, want to. He do thinks that. there's benefits though to having yeah, them together even if all. they sort of have their own PLs, their own management teams Look, he's from that side it's not like he doesn't like that side it's just that it, and they're going to use the body right. they're going to ask the dealers to specialize that was interesting uh yeah. jonas uh, morgan stanley's out this morning saying maybe it's a model of for other legacy oems to follow i thought so i thought Jonas, who, what, still has a sell on it, yep. wouldn't raise his price target. Every time I talk to Farley, I get furious about Jonas. Furious. I wonder if his brother hates it as much as he does. The Jonas Brothers? Yeah, of course. I'm so confused. I honestly don't know whether or not Kramer actually believes what he's saying or he's just incentivized to pump up Ford stock. Not that he would ever do that, as we discussed earlier, but just hypothetically speaking, I still can't quite figure it out. Either way, these comments will age about as well as the don't buy Tesla stock, don't even rent it comments from Kramer at Tesla's IPO back in 2010. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's use our imaginations and imagine a scenario which would never actually take place in the real world. But imagine a hypothetical scenario in which there was corruption within a political system, in this case, perhaps the United States, maybe even down in Oklahoma. In such an imaginary world, we might see things like this Oklahoma House bill, which effectively would force Tesla to not only close their existing service centers in Oklahoma, but ban the company from selling electric vehicles in the state. Of course, the graphic you just saw was imaginary, it's not real. If it were, Tesla might do something like make a web page dedicated to opposing this exact bill, giving people instructions on how to contact their US representatives and say, hang on a minute, this doesn't really sound fair. If anyone did hypothetically want to contact their US representatives, I'd probably put a link in the description to this very page. There's still time to have your say, so make your voice heard. And now let's take a moment to think about how absolutely fucking insane and corrupt it is that a bill like this would even exist. The very idea that this might make sense, be reasonable or fair, is just insane. Imagine preventing a United States based company from selling their products in your state and forcing them to close service centers. What possible justification could exist for this? <laughs> Spoiler alert, none. Absolutely no justification, but here's an explanation. Political corruption, pay the right people, the right money, gain the influence over their decision-making. 
Next minute, you have a bill to kick out a company who's potentially going to put you out of business. Now it starts to make sense. And now, on to Elon's gigantic balls. They are over on Twitter. Dmitry Rogozin, for those of you who don't know, basically the head of the Russian space program, to Russia today, quote, When Russia implements its highest national interest to the territory of Ukraine, aka invades Ukraine, but again, there's a lot of propaganda from the Russian side to the media, but this is what's being discussed. Elon Musk appears with his Starlink, which was previously declared as purely civilian. This isn't the first time Dim Eitri has called out Elon Musk following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The implication here appears to be that Starlink, Elon Musk are siding with Ukraine. They're no longer neutral. Maybe there's some government involvement as well. The use of the term civilian here has implications. If not civilian, then what? Is Starlink a government company, a government organization? Elon Musk, of course, with a pair of gigantic balls responding, knowing that he's getting dragged into the mud and pissing off senior Russian politicians and so on, not necessarily the best idea. Elon Musk's reply is just brilliant. Ukraine's civilian internet was experiencing strange outages. Bad weather, perhaps? So SpaceX is helping fix it. If we read between the lines here, of course, Russia doing their best to destroy communications within Ukraine during the current invasion. Russia, of course, unwilling to admit publicly that they're doing any invading. The Russian propaganda, of course, would never even acknowledge this or the fact that they were destroying communications within Ukraine as part of the invasion. Elon Musk outsmarting Russia at their own propaganda game, simply pointing out, oh, the Ukrainian civilian internet was experiencing some issues. Don't know what was causing it. Definitely not a Russian invasion. We're just trying to help out, that's all. There's not much that Dim Eitri can actually do here besides say, well, actually, we're invading Ukraine, we're trying to destroy their communications, and now you've taken a side, you're helping these motherfuckers out by giving them communications access after we've tried to destroy it. 200 IQ tweeting here from Elon Musk. Of course, most people are gigantic pussies and will be too fearful to even get involved, let alone engage a senior Russian politician. But here we are. Elon Musk gives zero fucks. Let me know in the comments below if you're a fan of Elon Musk's gigantic balls. Hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below now that Tesla is up over 25% in the past five trading days. Did anyone happen to buy the dip? I definitely did. And don't forget to sign up to Patreon using the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. You'll immediately gain access to a huge archive of exclusive content, including well over 100 exclusive Q&A videos on all sorts of topics, including many things I can't discuss here on YouTube unless I want to get cancelled, plus exclusive access to my Tesla stock price targets over the next decade in the bear case, the base case, and the bull case. So I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.